some stage in your career you will probably be in a position where you would build something new like uh, that could come from uh, if you are a new company if you are a startup you're going to set up something on your own that's a great opportunity but often it's not just startups who are going to do new things and you would do things like hey big if you are microsoft you want to build something new there's an always a constant need for innovation that happens and uh, either you are a chosen one or you you yourself spotted that opportunity one way or the other there is a big companies also create new products um if you are working in a product you will your product direction changes substantially those are times again like there is a lot of uh, ambiguity and you have an opportunity to shape it uh like you're introducing a whole new scenario like facebook is introducing facebook videos it's a whole new scenario practically you need to figure out is this even in need like so you start from there um and many new there's a ton of internal tools in fact i would encourage people who are new to product management to see if you can get into one of these internal product development opportunities they build tools used by employees tools used by engineers so these are all like so many new opportunities where product management and principles of new product development is applicable and what you will see is it's a very very ambiguous process like that's what is very unique about new product management every every product challenge is is a challenging place but what makes new products really challenging is you don't know whether what you're building is really useful to customers so so to build a typical product there is a different ways of building it there's a water flow model there's an agile model there's different ways of doing it but at the end of the day there is some form of a value prop to the customer that you're trying to build um you would translate that into a definition or a spec you would work with your squads of people who are engineers and designers and data scientists to build what you want to build but then there is a whole phase called as productization like it's one thing to build a product for 10 people another thing to build a product for 10 million people so then there is a whole scaling layer to it there is internationalization there is compliance there is privacy there is a whole lot of uh, uh, what do you say like um, uh, like te- checks and balances in system to make sure what you build is actually useful so it's a very expensive process it takes anywhere between 3 months to a year to build something meaty and meaningful and new products has this risk that what you're going to build may or may not even be useful so that's when as a product leader your first thing is hey wait a sec i'm building something or i'm telling people to build something is this really even useful right like you you start questioning um is this something that will customers value this sometimes customers might value but there's a huge switching cost for them to move from their existing product or their solution that they're using today so they may find value but it's still not good enough for them to make the move so those kinds of challenges you will face you'll also face a question like customers might find it valuable they are finding it something that they are willing to even pay for it you nailed the problem and then you go to your organization or you yourself as a leader you're going to find a question okay but is this still a size of business that i want to be in like you're going to solve this super cool problem people love it but it's just a 10 million dollar market opportunity right it may not be interesting even for like a 10 member company like so is this even a viable business is a place that you will constantly keep questioning like so these are things that you would probably not do in your like here a feature space but you're going to start answering these questions um you would also do taking a product to a market and and when you you do that like hey i'm building this new product and i'm taking this to market is my sales team really aligned like first of all do i even have a sales team to sell this do i is my marketing really aligned to market this does this align with my broader brand let's say if i microsoft is this product really is this how microsoft sees this is this how google sees this like you if you're a parent company shipping a new product like you also have to think about other stakeholders what does it mean for the big company that you're part of and last but not the least it's a, it's a place where there's going to be a lot of changes and most new things fail so it's very important to be systematic about it but it also means it takes a toll on the people who are working on it so you as a product leader are you ready to manage the energy levels of your whole team working on it so there will be a lot of changes like customers will say oh this is useful and then you find that oh no this is completely crap after two weeks because you're going in a different direction so there's a lot of pivots if you may call and um, so you need to manage that it's it's you don't want people to get or the team to be demotivated in the process like you want to ship stuff that adds value like everyone wants to do stuff that matters and when there is a lot of changes you need to manage the energy so that's something that you want to do last but not the least you have an exec sponsor like when you're working in a big company you don't have funding so you have an executive sponsor who sponsors these kind of new investments and they will lose patience if you don't deliver so how do you manage that like you know how do you manage somebody's hey this is the next 3 months you're going to deliver this output or next 6 months i'm going to take this new product to market how are you going to manage that while the vision is great but the small sliver of mvp that you're going to take to the market may or may not be interesting for this leader so 
you're going to face these kind of different set of stakeholders to deal with different scope of problems that you're going to face and not to say that your old challenges are gone like you're still going to think about over and above this you're still going to think about what we call as is what you're doing or what product you're taking to the market is it still usable by customers so when you're is this the best designed product is this uh, are the customers getting in two clicks are they getting to where they want so there's that that element to it and finally there is always this feasibility like how much is the cost how much i have dependency on my partner team all of those stuff that you need to manage so there is all these columns on the right hand side is a typical feature level challenges that you would face but as you're taking and building something new product the ones on the left becomes your worries so it says if this were your portfolio of worries the one on the left is going to take a lot of your time is the product that you're building really useful to customers is there a viable business and are you really able to ma- motivate the team and the leadership through this journey so these are the kind of challenges you would face and what has worked for me over a period of few years is i've learned that there is a three phases to this approaching a new product first one i would say is frame the problem really really well like framing is work with your leaders work with your team and say hey what exactly are you building why are you building what does success look like are we all really aligned on what we want to build like get that right like that is it is very applicable even at a uh, even as you're taking a first set of as you're entering into product management career i would say getting things written down in terms of what does success look like or what i call as framing the problem and we'll spend a little bit more time on that is something that helps a lot um usually they say you know what just run 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 agility speed so for success the first phase of the product when you're taking a product to market is when i would say slow it down get alignment get get an understanding of are we all on same page so that's what i call as framing so get the framing right and then you can press your accelerator when as you press your accelerator we're going to mitigate a lot of our risks because these new things as i said may or may not take off so how do we systematically identify how to approach these new products and so all that process called as discovery like this is where you talk to customers identify their needs show what you built and pre- like you know and then scale so again walk through an example of how you do this that's called as mitigating a stage called as discovery and this is a lot of stage where you want to do as much pivots as possible so when you build your teams you know when you put in your teams investments what you build actually takes off and that's finally all of this has this people aspect to it and the sooner you realize in your product management career that you are always whether you are a manager or not you are always managing people and their expectations you have to rally your team and you are the voice and you need to keep the uh, the team up and running so that's something that's an important part of your work as well so these are three things that i kind of pay attention to as i take a new product to market i've learned some of these the hard way but eventually i <laughs> think that this is this is a kind of a core toolkit that i've successfully been using over the last year or so okay so we uh, we talked about it and a lot of almost half the crowd here is aspiring product managers So now let's build a product um for aspiring product managers. So okay so a VP at a company called Careerly which is a cooked up con- company uh is telling you hey the company is actually is a tech based job placement company so they do matching of job postings with your even with your resumes and they do some fancy AI based matching and all those and um he wants to build a product for aspiring product managers and one of you or maybe if each one of you you are the one you are the chosen one to uh, to build this product um so our half of the people here are the target audience for this product so we should probably give real examples um so this product is targeted at non pms who want to become a pm okay so let's build a product for them um any thoughts on what would this look like before i walk you? i'm put together a story it's got a script so uh we just want to cur- out of curiosity like what what do you think you would need like as a aspiring product manager what product would make a difference to you to get into product management training materials training materials it's great one yeah anything else okay let's flip the coin what are your top pain points like what is stopping you from becoming product management let's put it that way so let's see what this vp has decided okay so we call this as a framing the problem right so you are the chosen one and it could have been it can be any one of these great ideas that we have come up with we could take this product in so many different direction So what would you do like theory, just standing here we got four ideas so what is the product exactly so that's where as a product leader i would just frame the problem it's you can do one pager you can do one slider depending on your company it's email like however you want but please get an agreement in terms of what exactly is the problem like the first question you would probably ask your vp is like hey why are we even doing this right like is this even is this for fun is this just an experiment like what is the rationale for doing this 
And if you're chosen, like you want to know what does success look like? Like, do you know why, what is success not so well defined yet? Um, the customer segment has been very, very clearly articulated. It's not always the case. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah. It's not always the case that this is so clear that it's an aspiring product managers and find out all those things. And what problems are you solving for them? Like get an idea and like, and just find out, okay, what, what could be wrong in kind of building uh, networking skills or in terms of building like say different types of product management exposure or your skill portfolio. There's so many things that can go wrong between now and a successful product. So let's list them all out. So that's called as framing the problem and taking a stab at just to give you a flavor of like, hey, let's say I am the PM here and I've got talked to VP and I say, hey, uh, why the hell are we doing this, right? So I'm trying to frame this out. And what I say by framing is, okay, we are building the new product for aspiring PMs is great, but why? We at Careerly, this is my conversation with the VP and VPs, I say, you know what? We at Careerly are all about placing people and we make our money on placing people. And uh, it turns out that this whole new generation of millennials and Gen Zs are just never satisfied with their work forever. So they're always switching careers. And um, PMs, half the people in this room want to become product managers, so are the, one of the classic examples of the hottest growing career switching track. Right? Like you can see Google Trends for product management is just shooting through the roof. So PMs to me are an example of how to place, for me this is a segment that I want to go after because it's a hot track. It's for career switchers and um, it's, it's one place I as a VP think that, hey, you know what? We are a job placement, you know, we match resumes to job profiles, but when you're doing switch, your resumes may not articulate the same skills as what the companies want. So our company should ideally build a product which will help you do that because we have all the portfolio of resumes on we have seen over so many years, you've got all the job posting you've seen over so many years, AI is a whole new hot thing, let's apply machine learning and natural language processing. So when you get a new person and skill set, let's help them build their resume snippet so you can articulate your transferable skills well. So maybe we meet your needs. And, um, and really to me it's, it's an engaged product that I want to build but to be honest with you, I really want this to be my next revenue generator. So by in a couple of years, I want this to be the place where I place 20, 30% of my job placement or my revenue should come through this product, right? So now with this framing is where we are going to approach product management. So what this means is like, you just got this download. You're going to go and share this with your development managers, design managers, whoever is, let's call it your squad of people are going to build that. Go and work with your marketing leaders, sales leaders, and your partners are going to take it to market and present this case and just say, hey, this is what our thinking is, right? Like, and you're gonna get a lot of questions, immediate question, like, is this a free product or a paid product? Right, do you want this to be a paid product, paid product? And engineering will say, you know what, we'll try this NLP stuff, which is a VP's idea, but is this the only thing that you want to get done? Like, or can we try some other ideas too? There are so many other ways to create this channel which generates 30% of the revenues eventually. Uh, we are okay, like our goal is to focus on like a new, it's a product led initiative, it's a new channel creation initiative, so we are okay. Uh, marketing will say, hey, what do you do about this branding? Is this the same brand as Careerly or is this a whole new branding? Like question, like, sometimes you may have an answer, sometimes you won't have an answer. And there are a lot of other risks that we will identify. Is this really useful to users? Like, like this whole resume snippet thing, this NLP stuff, do you think that will be useful to users? We don't know, we will find out. First of all, is this really even feasible? Like engineering will say, hey, I don't even know whether NLP is so good that you put your profile and they give you a resume snippet generator. Maybe, maybe not. We should go find out. Um, a legal person might come and say, can you really use these resumes or like these resume builders to go and place people? Like they're coming to use the product for just building the resume. You can't just use that to place people. So is this even a paid product? Is this even a viable business? Is there a legal risk here? I don't know. We'll find out. So this, what I'm telling here is at this stage, you're just going to have so many open questions and Getting all these questions in one place and to say, hey, I don't know, I'll go find out is still success. But at least it's what you're calling as a shared understanding. Like everybody who's working on this product now know the statement very well that you as a team are trying to build a product for aspiring product managers. Not because you want to solve a premium problem, but you're really solving a career switcher problem. So you want this to be something generic that can help you switch careers. And uh, our success is to create revenues eventually, but also an engaged platform. And you build a shared understanding of why do you think we are uniquely capable of doing it. We have the world's portfolio of resumes, we have the world's portfolio of job listings, and we have the technology to solve it, and nobody else 
other than us can go solve it. That's our framing. Like that's at this stage of the product, let's say a few weeks to a couple of weeks to three weeks, depending on how fast all these things take place, you've framed it really well and you have you've gone back to your VP and made sure all of this is exactly what he wants. You've gone and talked to your partner teams, made sure that they are aligned. You go and tell this to your engineers, developers, data scientists, your squads, if you have reportees in your PM team, go break down the problem for them. You kind of like structured it to kind of everyone is on the same page on what we are trying to achieve. That is a big success. Like framing this problem is a big success. And if this framing is done really well, I'll tell you when you know you've done this well, go talk to somebody on the on your somebody else in your company and say, hey, this is what I'm working. Would you want to come and work with us? And he says, Yeah, this is awesome. You got a hiring material. Like if you frame the problem really well, you are able to convince a person to come and work for you, that's when you've really framed it well. This is what I call as framing. So you've not, at this stage, nobody has even moved a needle. Like no engineering investment has been done. No, doc, no spec has been written in the conventional sense. But you're framing the problem to take the next stage. In this stage, it's better to slow down, better to get alignment, better to get questions answered than to go fast. But get them all on the same page. And then you're, now the moment and the accelerator is going to hit off. These are not frequently asked questions. You can say, hey, we don't know yet. Not really. We have not agreed on some of these things, but these are questions to be addressed as we get additional customer feedback. So there is a deadline for framing, otherwise you'll keep talking forever. And then it's okay to, to say we don't have an agreement. And you should actually listen to a talk at product school about how to manage stakeholders from someone from Boeing. It is fantastic. Like He maps about like, uh, he puts stakeholders in two by two and uses different kinds of methodologies to align stakeholders. That's something I use a lot at work too. So take a look at that. It's a very cool talk. Uh, so use that. In general, uh, it's a combination of um, there are, there's most of align uh, at the first stage. The lack of alignment is because nobody, everyone is making an assumption about customers like we have made so far. We made four ideas. We don't know whether any of those will stick. So very very soon, half your assumptions is going to go away. And let's go into the discovery phase to see how much, how quickly you can validate some of these data sets, okay? Cool, so I'll keep going. Um, okay, talk to customers, right? They say, get out of the building. That's what you should probably do immediately next. So how do you do that? You first wanna create a portfolio of customers to go and talk to. So it could be anywhere between 20 to 50 representative customers. So when I say representative customers, in our case, it's either somebody who has aspiring to go and become a PM, or somebody who has become a PM in the recent term. So there's a recency aspect to it. So if you should get, try to get hold of 20 to 50 people, and talk to them and understand like what were the challenges that they faced. In fact, when I ask you the first question, what do you want to build? You got a couple of answers. When I ask what is your pain point, you got a couple of different answers. So just understanding from them what are their key pain points and how did they go about this process is something that is of very, very valuable for you. And we'll do that in more detail. And your goal in talking to these customers is to eventually work with them and create a case study to say, hey, Mathia used this fictitious product that we're going to build to actually move from data analytics into product management to a tier one tech company, right? Something of that sort. So that's how you are going to approach this. So through these 50 to 70 conversations, you want to create at least five to six people who eventually will use your product. But at this stage, you're just talking to them, understand their needs and create success stories. So with that mindset is what you want to create. And oftentimes, you will not be able to recruit even 50 people for this or 30 people for to going and talking to. And that's not a failure. Like if you are solving a problem for which there's no 30 or 40 people in the market, depending on the type of business, but let's say you're building a consumer app. And if you're not able to find 50 people to come and talk to you, you are solving a problem which probably doesn't exist. So even that indication of trying to recruit or create a portfolio of people to go and talk to a few times or at least once, is a big learning experience. So the first step is identify the set of people to go and talk to. Then you want to do what's called as a customer discovery. So um, help me connect to do practice. How many of you have faced this challenge in terms of trying to get to a PM role, but I want to, all this is cool, but I want to like practice interviews. You talked about one example, like, so, like those kinds of challenges exist. And finally, you know what? I want a referral to apply in your company. So. Starting to talk only five people, I'm mapping out what an aspiring PM's journey into a PM job looks like. These are efforts which people are really doing. And we at Careerly could help them any of these places, right? Like we could solve any one of these problems for them at Careerly. And, and what do you do next? Like we just continue asking them, okay, which of these is the most important pain point for you? Like 
If you talk to 30 to 50 people and you ask them, say, hey, if I give you 100 points and I cannot build all five of those that I showed you, but I can only start building with one, where would you allocate your resources? Just give them 100 points. I say, hey, I'll give you $100. What does this mean for you? Would you spend more time in articulating your skill set or would you want to connect to network? Or would you like a referral or would you like a, a practice interview? Right? Like, you just going to get a sense of like these pain points articulated and you're going to score. Like, ask, or the pattern starting to emerge. So one thing you'll find is people don't, if they tell something is great, it's often not true. But if they say something is bad, it's often always it's bad. So with that sense, like if a pain is real or not real, you're going to get a quick distribution of the kind of pain points. This is a fictitious part. So I've just made up these numbers. So let's say 50 PM's conversation in, I have found out that interview practice is the biggest problem which aspiring PMs are facing. And uh, connecting PM is probably the next big thing. Um, PM course, job search is real, resume builder is at five. And at Careerly, with my VP's guidance, I am here. So most probably, the product that I'm going to build is not going to take off at this stage. So, so, so far we talked about pain points and we are now pivoting from, or at least think that we are going to pivot from resume builder into a, an interview practice like setup. And um, that's when it goes through a phase called as product discovery. So in product discovery, what we do is out of these people that we talk to, we pick like 10 or 15 people with whom we're given good feedback and we're very interested and we're a real need for this problem. And we meet them almost twice a week and we show them our solutions. Like right now is when the solutioning starts to come to play. So you start with value props, then you show some design mockups, and then you actually show a prototype. You ask them to use it. Eventually, the product will be used with a case study with them. So it's an ongoing, intense effort that you will go through. And this is where you can talk about payment, pricing, would you buy, and all those kinds of stuff comes in. Comes in this thing. Okay, so let's see what a product discovery stage would look like. So I'm gonna, I've not ruled out resume builder yet. I'm going to go to the same 15, 16 users. I want to say, hey, I want to show a value prop. A value prop is uh, we help PM, you know, we, our product really helps you create PM resume snippets by analyzing other people who have similar experience. So let's say you want to articulate your skills. Not only do we know what skills do you need, we also know other people like you who are successful and we articulate that and in a systematic way using NLP. How useful is this for you? And we get a score of 1.2. And why? Like people are telling, hey, you know what? I, I can copy from LinkedIn. Like it's not a big deal for me to put this together. It's, it's, it's not so hard, like it's, uh, I don't know, like okay, but you know what, it's still it's a VP's idea, you cannot kill it too soon, let's do one more, <laughs> one more shot at it. So then I show him a mock-up, and I say, hey, this is how it looks like, you know what, this is kind of, uh, put in your title, you're looking for product manager, we give you some snippets, again, this LinkedIn is just an example, it can be any other mock that your team has come up with. How useful is this on a scale of one to two, or one to five, or whatever, how, how useful is this? And uh, uh, and again, like, you know what, they probably by now they're very kind to you and they kind of increase it from 1.2 to 1.5. <laughs> <It's, laughs> so you'll find, like, if you keep those kinds of things happen, but net net, you know what, this is exist, this is not something that useful for me. How often would I use, you know what, the, the day I prepare my resume is like once in three months, I just go to LinkedIn, I spend four hours. That's the only time I would use. This is definitely not something I would pay for. Those kinds of feedback you're getting. So we're not going to give the bad news yet. So we can't just go and say, hey, what we're building is obviously not the right thing to do. So we're going to try something. And we said, hey, interview practice. We said, what's the top pain point? Let's try out. Let's go with a, just a slide and say, hey, I'm going to build this product. Obviously, in three months, uh, we don't have anything yet right now. So we, this product will help you practice interviews for your PM interviews by connecting with people who've done this before. OK, so rated one to five. How would you use? How often would you use this? And the score is like 4.4, and love it. Like this is something that I badly want. Um, <clears throat> I struggle to. I can read up everything on the web, but when I really want to practice, I don't know who to practice with. Um, so yeah, it's so good to go. So we, I think I'm like super happy. I'm gonna go tell my team. Uh, this is kind of something that we should do. I work with a quick sketch or a quick prototype, and I say, hey, here's how my product would look like. It's like Tinder. You go left. You go right. We pick people that will match you to meet your needs, uh, and you can go and do practice interviews. Again, all these are PMs and aspiring PMs, and then your score, it's already declining. Right? Like from 4.4, you know what? Maybe I'll get the right match, maybe not. I don't know uh, how you're choosing these people, how, what's the quality of people I'm going to talk to. At this stage, it's like, 
Okay, so what this means is you have really nailed a problem statement of trying to go and practice interview, but your solution is not right or it's already dipping. Like it's not trending well, you want to do more and you find out that problem is worth solving. I don't really know whether this is the right solution. Let's find out, right? So you kind of see that in pattern. And what do you do at this stage? You kind of, you know that there is something in this interview space and uh, you're, there is somebody working in the team already focusing on that old resume builder stage. So they all have to be changed direction now. You want to rally the team. Like, and let me pause for any question and I'll kind of wrap up with that rallying the team part of it and see how the story ends. So that's probably the uh, last bit. Yeah, for interviews, you can go choose. He's got five years experience and this person got two years experience. You can do left, right and match. Who knows, right? Like, or you want to do product sense. This person is very good at, uh, I don't know, what is the metrics. You can choose what you want. Like, we'll figure it out, right? Like, if this was, if they said, yeah, I love it. I want to take this out and go all in and figure out what does that mean? How would you choose people? What is the profile of a person? All stuff, but not there yet. Let's find out. Okay, cool. So you go to your team and you present what's called as a hypothesis progression map. Okay, so, so far, what you should understand is different people are in different time zones. Your VP gave you an idea and he walked away. Your salesperson and your uh, marketing leaders were in that first set of brainstorming and framing and they walked away. Your engineer, who's just one guy who's going to kill you for this finding, but he's working on this whole NLP and whole, <laughs> whole lot of this product that you're trying out and he's in that time zone. And you and your engineering manager and design manager probably heard some of these calls. You'll find that you would have shared these calls and nobody listens. And these customer conversations, you and you're probably a user researcher if you are a big team or you yourself would be in all these conversations. You're all in different time zones and you want to bring them all on the same page. Like that's the very, very crucial part of a, of a new product premium. Like as a product leader, you want to say, okay, guys, this is it. This is moment. Let's reset. Shared consciousness should be there. And the moment is now. What you said it out is, hey, here's my goal. I started out with building a new aspiring PM. I want to create a new channel. We started out building possibly different ideas. This was our VP's idea to build resume builder. But you could do a PM course. You could do a PM connector, like because they helped me network, help me practice interview, help me do a job search. Like this was, you remember the journey? We kind of said that. At this stage, you're kind of telling that this is red. This is looking green. Others have not even explored, right? And you're going to use this to rally the team. By rally the team is like, hey, talk to the, that guy who's working on something that's not going to be used. Like, just definitely get him involved and give him update. Hey, we're making changes. Let's find a way to re-pivot this direction. Get a brainstorming session. Hey, you know what? This interview practice is a need, but our whole stuff that me and my designer came up with as a back of napkin Tinder-like stuff is not taking off. But maybe there's something else here. So maybe let's brainstorm. Maybe someone in your engineering or data science says, hey, let's build a bot. Right? Like who knows, like that could be an idea. Someone in your partner or marketing, sales, business development may say, hey, let's go build a portfolio builder. So there are so many ideas that's going to come up. You're going to evolve this map and say, hey, are there ideas that you want to explore within interview practice that you want to go and try further? Or are there more ideas that you want to explore as a product concept itself? And you're, now you're going to evolve as a team and say, hey, you know what, this is interesting. Let's go further in this. We've spent enough time and probably we should make progress. And I think there is a there there. So we're probably using that and 60% of the people are talking about this pain point means that this is real. So we just show the Tinder for aspiring PMs. But maybe we figure out what's called as interview mentor. Okay, so there's a product called interview mentor we came up with. And the value prop for that is you come in and you identify your company of choice. Let's say you want to apply for, say, Apple. You come into your website and you put up Apple as a company of choice and you're an aspiring PM. We help you to connect with people who are interviewed there and who who gone through or not got through the process so you can have an interview practice. So that's kind of another possible product. So this kind of so at this stage, we have marked something as red, something as green. And some of these stages have opened up the branches of exploration. So this is where, to your point, how much fidelity in your designs have to be there. Now, we are given that we are doing um, low fidelity, we want to go into a little bit more. We start with what's called a storyboards. So storyboards will be like a collection of screens to walk you through a journey. So I've still not given up on the Tinder one yet. So let's see, is there something here? So Mathia logs into the portal. Like that'll be on screen one. And screen two, you'll say Mathia has shown a new set of like, you know, like he's shown a new set of aspiring PMs every day. You know, then he swipes right and swipes left and like he picks PMs based on his skill set of interest. Uh, if there is mutual interest, he connects with a person by name John to practice an interview. Like this is like five slides 
of visuals maybe a little bit more detailed just in case that whole tinder has some potential right like scores go even lower 2.8 <laughs> it's like the thing is i don't know whether the other pms are actually good enough to practice with like others are also aspirants right like that could be a reason so that's one of the reasons i heard then you do what's called a interview mentor program which we just talked about right matthias logs into the portal he selects the company of interest so he comes in you show a screen hey come and enter your company of choice it shows a list of people who work at those companies who have recently gone through or probably interviewed you can select candidates of interest and he just chooses to connect to them to do an interview super high level this is what success would look like is what we are trying to showcase and this rating is 4.2 you know like people are telling you know what i am going to pay for this this is something that i'm really worth it for me it helps me to become a pm i am willing to pay for this service now you done this you're going to go further on this so let's go even one more step and what does each of the screen means like okay there will be a time you will want to say hey how do you, how do you make this whole registration easier matia registers on the portal okay do you want to use linkedin registration google registration facebook registration or do you want to give a new registration form so there will be sessions where you're just going to focus on this problem and then you'll say for my mvp only these two are my part of my mvp right so now your story in some sense is getting drilled into further and further detail uh, similarly with how do you select companies are you recommended companies to apply or are you it's manually selecting so there are two different one and mvp let's just make the user select we'll figure out recommendation for it later clicks to send a meeting like do you want to just send a meeting invite or are you going to make it easy for him to add it into his calendar like the whole two separate specs in some sense so um how does it work so all of these your story is kind of getting drilled down some parts of it is going to get greener some parts of it is going to get redder with time and whatever stays in green becomes your mvp what stays in red gets eliminated by now you're kind of at a stage where this is probably looking like a product that you want to build and uh you do more of these activities you're continuing to rally the team like at every stage you're going to another round of rallying they say hey guys regroup this is how our product looks like uh again and again if there's one thing i'll tell you when you're cutting effort talk to the person build relationship and talk to the person who is working on stuff that work is getting thrown away try to find ways to reuse it but tell the truth that hey we are making a product direction it's good for the company it's good for the business i know you worked on it let's make sure that your work is valued and if possible repurposed but get them on board like it's very very important to do that um brainstorm additional solutions flesh this out further by now your team is probably big and you're hopefully built something that's already adding value to the users uh then you want to like align your team set up okrs and all those stuff so so over a period of time your map will look like this with some 20 columns like every week you will have a column of different experiments at different stages you will go back and forth hey did we miss out on an idea at a concept level you'll go back and add it to this you'll go run those tests and uh, you keep doing this on a periodic basis it's a very intense uh, activity of combination of showing getting feedback at some stage your product becomes a prototype you'll open it up for them to use the product and give you feedback you'll start having telemetry like fun things happen right when you have these calls set up they'll use the product just 15 minutes before the call and then come and tell you hey i use this so <laughs> that's probably not a great sign you probably want to see a uniform usage some features which are really adding value they'll use it all the time there are other features where you'll tell them hey i'm going to talk about this feature let's spend time on it they'll spend like one hour before that call you'd see users using it so use telemetry as a way to make things red and green over a period of time and 12 to 18 months you have a whole new product which is going to help aspiring pms connect to other pms to do interviews um and the whole idea of resume builder was not going to take off but we mitigated it we navigated through it we did it as a team and uh, vp is happy your product is out users are using it they're engaging it and now this is a model that he wants to use 30% of the pm are getting placed through this portal it's becoming a paid service um and uh, yeah it's it's a good story now he's going to expand this beyond pms to other career switchers that's all i had